The electron track stops uh, very shortly in liquid, therefore you only see a point. Uh, but thinking of the double beta events, you actually have two electrons emitting from the same vertex, so you do actually have the uh, tracking ability that will allow you um, to um, uh, that will allow you to do the uh, discrimination looking for specific uh, tracks. And this was actually a concept which initially uh, lies, uh, uh, initiated by a uh, Spanish collaboration called NEST. So for us, we envisioned the first module to be 200 kilogram uh, with 10 atmosphere uh, enclosed in ultra pure copper. Uh, and then you will be able to do the electron drifting same way as the liquid TPC. Uh, but I'll, the electron tracks is longer in the, uh, in, in the gas. And in the end, we will have four more upgraded modules uh, to reach a town scale experiment. And the sensitivity for such an experiment is illustrated here. Okay, so for the first 200 kilogram module, if you look at the sensitivity to an effective uh, double beta decay, effective mass, uh, M beta beta, it will be able to reach to a level of 100 milli electron volts. Okay, so here are two bands in this M beta beta versus the lightest neutrino for the inverted neutrino hierarchy and the normal hierarchy. So 200 kilogram is actually getting to a pretty interesting region, although not entirely uh, um, just uh, touching or kissing the span from the inverted hierarchy. And the tongue scale experiment will be actually be, uh, be fully covering this inverted hierarchy region. Um, just assuming a standard three neutrino, um, uh, a light neutrino uh, paradigm, Mayorana uh, paradigm. Okay, so just to show you that everything is happening in real time, this is uh, the, um, the design uh, picture showing the one experimental hall. This is how it looked like in reality. And if you, so this is you're viewing the end of the uh, experimental hall. This area is a um, uh, the area for the water pool, the water pool is 13 meter deep and you see that everything is lined already with concrete and uh, this thing is recently in place and now we're building a steel structure uh, building a large platform on top of the water pool so that all the equipment can get on and we're also constructing the cranes and all the infrastructure for the experimental hall so things are moving along very quickly so let me now um, summarize uh, what I said uh, hopefully I convinced you that there actually are actually many exciting physics opportunities in Panda X um, uh, at the world deepest the CGPL and we are also moving along very fast uh, Panda 2 has reached the forefront of the dark matter research um, and we will continue the Panda 2 data taking until um, the end of 2018 and uh, the collaboration is going forward uh, in preparation for the next phase multi town dark matter experiment as well as the Panda X3, the double beta decay experiment and uh, for this forum, we really love to discuss with theorists. Uh, we have data and uh, we like some guidance to, um, from theorists where and what to look in the day. Thank you very much. Thanks for the very exciting talk. Uh, questions? Yes. Would you be sensitive also to look for minor energy in decay modes of the robot decay, in which, for example, the mass mechanism, you can have the emission of a boat to both light uh, particle, which will lead to a spectrum, a continuous spectrum, different from the two neutrino mode, but not uh, sharply. Yeah, well, so we have the spectrum. I think that once you have the electron uh, signal out, you could do spectrum fit. I mean, I think we will. But I don't know how competitive that is. Because, you know, if it's a featureless back, uh, signal, and then uh, on top of uh, another continuum background, it could be difficult to pick it up. So it's just uh, the internal sensitivity we don't know. Thank you. More questions? Yes, John, you, you said the uh, 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 Max basically finished the data taking, right? Yes, yes. Yes, they conclude. So the curve you show there is a preliminary, but it includes all the data already? That includes. So the black one, so the initial, um, the initial archive had this curve, which had only their second round, with 300 days of exposure. And then, they, they, and then the same paper, they up, uh, updated it to include the, the overall exposure in the same market, they updated it. And this was submitted to PRL. 
um, but it is not published yet. So uh, just to give you why the so this they had a 1.1 a factor of two more um, um, uh, uh, constraint uh, uh, limit, uh, but then they do have actually an under fluctuated um, um, background in their first run. Therefore, their limit was actually very tight by combining their first 95 days from this the second period. Last phrase change for the Lux and the Punk IX because yeah. uh, they have a uh, similar exposure yeah. as you are. But in the grade line, why is better? The grade line is better. I, there's a number of reasons. It's just slightly, okay, so when you look at this, uh, I think that uh, the, uh, the gray line, uh, uh, we are slightly better at the low mass and they are slightly better. This is a log scale. We're slightly better at the, uh, the high mass. The most important reason is that their energy cut is higher than ours. So therefore you include more high energy recoils, leading you more sensitivity to the high mass uh, winds. Okay. It was just a choice of the uh, it was just a choice of the, the energy company. Because I always confused about the last layer analysis. Why don't they publish it? Do you know why why don't they publish the data like a uh, Panda X does have uh, uh, events after cuts and uh, with a background? Do they do particular well, they have it on the talk. Uh, they have it on the talk. I mean, they have to also do a lot of correction to their data points. And they don't have a table showing exactly what is the leaked events below that, because they actually have several <coughs> running conditions. I think yes. in particular in the second running period, they had actually a uh, time-changing drift field, which uh, does not really allow you to uh, make a simple cut and do a cut and count analysis. The, the, it's a time-changing condition, so th there's not a single line you could say below this line is signal-like. So, so they didn't, yeah, therefore they don't have such a... That line effect is a limit. Well, the, the, the trick is if you start doing likelihood analysis, in principle, you have more information. So it's no longer just a cut and count. You take into account all the um, uh, signal and background distribution. Now, if you have some strange leaked events, which is not consistent with the signal PDF in that matter. In fact, it doesn't really, really it does not hurt that much the, uh, the, the limit because it does not look like the, the signal anyway. So, so the profile uh, analysis give you more handle. I think that's another reason for that. Uh, um, you know, so, so you cannot directly compare apple to apple using a cut and count analysis in the profile analysis. Yes. Uh, I just wondering, uh, so for uh, uh, x uh data, so the curve is still at one PUB on the yeah. mass. Yeah. You can go higher as the other guys. Are there was no reason not to. There was no reason not to. Yeah. Okay. So so we could, um, but it's uh, uh, in fact it's th this this line is essentially predictable. It's just going straight up. I mean, in the Lux paper, if you look at their first paper, there was an interesting comment. Their first paper says this line goes all the way up to heavier and heavier uh, dark matter mass, except uh, at certain point, the effect of the Earth uh, scattering this, uh, the wind star getting reported. So, so <laughs> it's, keep going. it's funny, it, it's very predictable line, you just keep going on straight up. Just, so you guys could do that? We could, we could. There's no reason not to. Yes? No. Just out of curiosity, you mentioned there is eight experimental halls now yeah. at this new site. Are there any plans for what to do in the yes. other? So, uh, in, in fact, I cannot speak for the, for the lab, but uh, there's actually there's an international advisory committee which was visiting the, um, uh, having a, a panel discussion uh, last week. So there are proposals. Um, this is Panda X. Um, I believe um, this experimental hall is for the next phase of CDEX. So, so whatever is already in CGPL1, we'll move to these two experimental halls. And there is a few on the table. I believe this experimental hall, which is furthest away from everybody else, will be uh, hosting a nuclear astrophysics experiment um, um, called Juna. This experiment is very similar to another program at uh, Grand Sasso. Essentially, made a very low cross-section alpha n process um, um, in the, uh, in the um, early universe. And so that was uh, uh, nuclear astrophysics, uh, and then. The rest is the proposal on the table. There will be actually a directional dark matter um, detection experiment, um, uh, which was being discussed. And uh, there's another double beta decay experiment also using gases TPC being 
discussed. Uh, what's the other one? Um, and also, um, there is a, a proposal from INHAP of going after a 20 kiloton scale uh, liquid argon. So they will also do a phase development. So, so they, they are collaborating with dark side, but because the um, um, they also like to do some parallel effort in uh, CJPL. So liquid argon is also part of the story. But uh, I think the more mature proposal is these two, the germanium and, uh, and xenon, and also the yeah, nuclear astrophysics. Those three are pretty preferred. The rest are being discussed. Okay. Yes. Right. So is the panel axis T and the panel axis 3, are they going to be in sequence or they can be put in the sequence? They will be in parallel. So I mean, this, this picture, of course, is our hope that uh, the two can run side by side together. We never know whether the, uh, the schedule. I think that uh, so we will try to do a, uh, a photon experiment and uh, a 200 kilogram module in parallel. Depending on the schedule, we'll see which one goes in first and whether these two are practical to run into the, in, the, in, the, in the same gear. We have the we have the so this is 27 meter long. It's, 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 um, yeah, you don't get it from the picture because it's hard to uh, to really take the picture. But this is 27 meters long, so our uh, judgment is that each detector should be at least shielded to five and a half meters away from the rock. So this is a huge, huge waterfall. But one of the experiments generates some background to the other. No, we look at it. So the only problem is that uh, this experiment here, because it's using stainless steel. In fact, the double beta decay requires a better, um, even more stringent background requirement. So the only problem is that all these steel structure and also the stainless steel housing for the dark matter detector, which is okay for dark matter, whether this would generate background for the double beta decay. We think we will be not based on the current estimate of the radioactivity we could have. I think that they will have no crosstalk. Yes? I don't remember. Are there lower bounds on uh, this nuclear dark matter cross section? Yeah, I, it's a very good question. Um, there was no physical nuclear bound, but there's an like experimental bound, experimental constraint. Let me show you. Uh, oh, um, do I have this picture? Um, let me just. Maybe I do. Okay, so let me show. The, essentially, you're running at a certain point. You're running into the neutrino background. So it, it's not shown here, but you sort of see it from the Lux figure that um, the solar neutrino and the ferric neutrino, they could also cause coherent nuclear scattering. Um, some people say you might have a way of going uh, beyond that, but currently we use it sort of as the, 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 the best or the ultimate limit from the dark matter conservatively. So you see that right now the limit for boron-8 neutrino coherent elastic scattering is already not so far away from the exclusion curve. Now I think that at this favored wimp region, so to speak, uh, that's still three order magnitude to go before touching the neutrino background. So this is still room. Um, yeah, so there's some, um, you could do a lot in terms of Susie model before you hit that wall. I want to comment on this neutrino uh, coherent background. I just don't think that's uh, that's really show stopper. The thing about the SIC, uh, LRC, LRC, the, the, the overall background, the nine orders magnitude bigger than the signal we're looking for. So you always find a way to separate the the, uh, the, the overall background from the signal. Of course, it's uh, not easy, but I just don't think that's a uh, right. Say. So yeah. so I think that's a lot of people are looking at this. Yeah. Um, the reason that you see that overall eight background located at the specific dark matter mass, there's a special reason. It's that it turns out this energy looks very much like a 6 GeV heavy wimp signal. So just like the other question, when you have two spectrum with not enough feature, then you really have to do some fit in order to distangle them. You do have sensitivity by looking for the difference in shape, but uh, the handle is small, so people are not sure about the sensitivity exactly. Uh, the other uh, important thing is that suppose we find a signal in the direct detection, uh, maybe the next thing to do is to build a gases detector to look for directional information. And therefore, by that, you could discriminate the neutrino background from the actual galactic uh, wind signal. So that's another handle. But then the gases detector, you have to make it super big. And whether you can get a ton scale is a huge question. So, so it's, it's being debated a lot. But uh, I agree with you that's not the output background. So conservatively, we use it as a conservative sort of law.
not the hard one. Okay, great. Uh, we should move on. Let's thank uh, John Mayer. Thank you very much.